Hello anime fans, this is San212 coming to you for the Taco Crazy 80 channel and today we're going to be talking about Toonami which came on about 5 days ago. Big surprise to everybody, it's been off for almost 10 years. Um, we're going to be talking about what Toonami did for a lot of people in the, in the culture of anime in the United States because Toonami really took over the United States. Um, with Dragon Ball when it first came out, um, Yu Hashiko later, um, most people used to Go from get out of class, go straight home, watch Toonami. People used to stop, their lives used to stop to go watch Toonami. Toonami has been a big impact in our United States anime culture, especially for otakus in the United States, which basically started most of these new conventions that's coming out. Um, widespread anime. Anime was in Best Buy, FYE, Sun Coast, Media Play when it was open, um, Fries, Right Stuff, all these three places that actually made it, actually made anime cheaper to get access to. Not only that, um, DVD sales was crazy. It really brought manga out to the mainstreams. Toonami was like, the ultimate thing to watch, especially if you was a big Dragon Ball Z fan, because Dragon Ball that's the only place you could watch it. It pushed DV DVDs, videos. It brought toys, and it brought everything. It brought action figures. It brought people together that wouldn't be together, um, that wouldn't even know each other. Toonami did that for a lot of people. A lot of people without Toonami when never really understood themselves. A lot of people say that, like, Toonami kind of defied what I was, especially with those, um, t about a minute, two minute, um, music trailers, um, really just defined a lot of people's lives, um, in their teenage years, some as, as adult years, but, I mean, Toonami was the most phenomenal thing ever and we're going to talk about basically this might be a two part thing with just Dragon Ball Dragon Ball Toonami coming on watching it you loved it hate it you you love watching it you hate it that it kept on repeating back over from the beginning to the freezer part before he went Super Saiyan and it was like everybody was getting mad and he was yelling at um Cartoon Network Toonami Toonami Show uh Goku going Super Saiyan. I remember that most people went when Goku went Super Saiyan. It was just like the ultimate thing. It was the talk in schools. It was the talk in offices. It was talk everywhere. I mean, grown adults was talking about Dragon Ball Z like how it was going out and it was Super Saiyan two. He was called Super Saiyan. He was about to be Frieza and like twenty six episodes after that, it took five minutes in the actual thing. It was like five minutes. In five minutes, the plan is going to blow up. It was 26 episodes long. 26 episodes for five minutes. Which was like amazing. And then it just expanded and expanded. And then Toonami came out with Outlaw Star. If you didn't, if Outlaw Star was like one of the greatest space things out there. It was like, it was like the geekdom of Star Trek. I mean, anime and just badassism. And... Outlaw Star just took it there. Gene Star win. Um, Asia Clan Clan. That was like Asia Clan Clan and Gene Star win is the ones that you really all know. Suzaku um, and Fred. That 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 one was like more real amazing. That it took you to another world. It put spells. It made casters caster famous. People like magic bullet guns, okay? Magic bullet guns. Who, who, who the hell thought about magic bullet guns into an outlaw star in America? Now, yeah, there's blue mages in Final Fantasy, but only Final Fantasy people made that cool. But it really got cool when Outlaw Star came out and was cast as robot ships with hands that fought each other. Ships, spaceships fought each other in a way that they brawled. And I lost stars music, the sound, the style, the quality of the film. Um, the actors were so great. The voice actors were so great. The DVD box set that came out was so nice. I had it. 
it's destroyed. You don't see it in my collection over there, which you know I'm still gonna be showing off soon, hopefully sooner or later. But today is all about Toonami and to what Toonami did for for everybody else, and it's like it brought Tenchi Tenchi Moyo, one of the the beginning of Harlem, the Harlem girl thing with the with five, six, eight girls on one dude and you know, dude is like, oh, I was just trying to get my life together, and, you know, doing normal things and it's like these girls just keep on coming in, bothering, found out he's half alien, he's got all these powers. Um the women that's in love with him thousands of years old. If you watch the original, if you watch Tichi Mojo, then they came up with Tichi Universe, which kind of made them all the same age. And Tichi of Tokyo, which oh, it's garbage to me. But um, but yeah, Tichi greatest thing came out. It's on Toonami. You loved it, and then Toonami expanded. It just didn't come on. It was like Toonami maybe was like. One hour when it first came on, and then you gotta think about Toonami when it first started out. It was like old school stuff when it, it it didn't even have time in it. When time time came later, when Dragon Ball Z really started coming through, when it was really it was Motard um, doing the stuff for um, Toonami, and it was like Robotech, one of the first animes that came out to the United States. Even though they took it to like parts of Matt Cross, Super Dimensional, um, Super Dimensional Seed, and I forgot what the fourth, the third one was when they put it together and made Robotech, which in the 80s just really brought anime over here little by little, and then Dragon Ball took it and just expanded it for the uh, masses. But it was also Thundercats that came out for it. And with that with Lionel, it brought back some of the 80 stuff and it made 80 stuff great and expanded that to what we just talked about with Dragon Ball Z and Yu Hashiko and Gundam 0083, which came out on the Toonami After Dark, um, the Saturday Day program that they had show, which Gundam 0083, Gundam 0080, um, Goddess of Candidates, and Yu Yu Hashiko. Which Yu Yu Hashiko is one of those type of things that was famous in Japan. And then they brought it over here and it blew up over here. And it was like both cultures could understand that because like they loved Yu Yu Hashiko when they was reading it and watching it. And then we got it and it was like wow we understand what that's all about Yu Yu Hashiko. Yeah. Spirit Gun, Yusuke Yurameshi, all these things that just brought both cultures together, American and and Japan, and they brought them together. And what happened was, it's like we started understanding that they started doing more American stuff while we were still doing Japanese stuff and it was just a uh, big melding listening to Japanese rap, Japanese um, J-pop, all that stuff because we was listening to the, all the stuff and we listened to the openings and it's like wow these openings are great especially with um, Gundam Day um, Double O had great music it was orchestrated though some of it was um, you know J-pop of that time but it was like some of it, like most of Toonami was, it was action, it was dark, it had meaning. It was like, I'm going home, I'm riding in the Gundam. And I understood where this dude was coming from. Um, and Gundam 0083. Gundam 0080, it was alright. It didn't really sport out for Toonami like it was supposed to. Um, Tenchi. Greatest thing that came out for it. I mean, that made, that brought, actually brought, it's like, if you was a dude and, you know, your girl didn't even know what anime was, Tichi actually brought anime to um, women. And even if women, there was a lot of women that got on Dragon Ball Z. 
but it really brought them over here and then it made them understand it and they started watching a lot of stuff that came out for them like Sailor Moon which actually went on Toonami after the fact even though it came out earlier but it really blew up on Toonami to Sailor Moon, Sailor Scouts, I remember it was like my sisters and them they came home from Toonami watching that um, I remember girls always talking about, yeah, watch the Sailor Moon, Sailor Moon. These is like grown women that be like talking about they don't like keep like how boys talk about childish. Like this being childish, but they go and I'll talk about Sailor Moon, Sailor Scouts, and all this stuff, and they're like wearing the dresses like that. That's what Toonami brought. Toonami brought anime culture, made it mainstream, and people liked it, and they was understanding it, and it was like something in their everyday lives, and. For it to just come back like that, 10 years from now, you know, it might have been an April Fool's joke, and hopefully it's not an April Fool's joke, and if it was an April Fool's joke, and they was saying, all the people who came and watched Toonami, we need to bring this back, we need to bring some new episodes, we need to bring some of the old stuff, like, mix it up, yeah, uh, Dragon Ball, not really, but yeah, you could bring it back, and it and it will work, bring back that Outlaw Star, bring back that, well, Cowboy Bebop is not really Toonami, but bring back that Outlaw Star. Um, bring back to Sailor Moon. Bring back Thundercats. I, I like Thundercats. Even you could have put th right now, you could put the new Thundercats on Toonami and call it a Toonami thing, and it will blow up. Cartoon Network, you don't know where you're putting that stuff at. Toonami, bring back Toonami. Toonami After Dark. Um, Gundam Wing. Gundam Wing was like the most ballinest thing ever. You just. It's Toonami. That's what it is. Toonami. Gundam Wing brought back five pilots. Brought five pilots. They were like teenagers. And it was like, you can understand that because I'm like, I'm a teenager. And I need. And I want to rebel for what I'm going to do. And it's like, Gundam Wing. Brought that to us. It, it kind of like wow. Look at these people. They're they're fighting. They're fighting adults. They're fighting the system, and they and, and, and they know what they're doing. And that's what you wanted to be. You wanted to be that person that knew what they was doing. And Gundam Wing really brought that to people like that. Plus, it was Gundam. It was Wing Zero was great. It was like the mind control of Wing Zero. If you had to defeat that. Zex Marquis, Trey Scruzonata, um, Hero Yui, Maxwell Duo, and all, all of them. But, you know, um, it's also brought one of the most whiniest characters into Gundam series. And, you know, you know who I'm talking about, the run that controlled Sand Rock. Sand Rock was a cool Gundam. Just had a weak pilot. Um, and then, the weirdest Gundam ever, the Heavy Arms. The Heavy Arms sucked in the um, TV show. But was so great in the Endless Watts OVA, which I'm really gonna do an in-depth review of Endless Watts OVA, cause that really needs an in-depth review. And if if somebody else did it, tell me. If it hasn't been done, I'm really going to do that. I really want to do an in-depth review with Endless Watts, not just when they showed it. They show Endless Watts on um on Toonami, which was. Right, they showed the three-part one, and then they showed the movie. They actually showed both versions of it on Toonami, so that was great. And then it was a Toonami cut. Most people don't know that. There's three, actually three cuts. There's the OVA, which which is the three-part episode, which is three episode, 45-minute episodes. Then it's the movie, which they added extra stuff to it and cut out certain parts of it. And then there was the Toonami version, which they cut out parts and added flashback stuff which was kind of cool but Gundam Wing did like bring something that everybody talked about they talked about it in the table they talked about um, what was going on and what was Hiro Yui doing and all this and this 
what's going in the first part of my tsunami thing because I got more tsunami. I want to go in depth with tsunami. I want to go in depth with even more with Yu Yu Hashiko and how it affected our lives as American otakus and anime lovers and manga readers. Tsunami is like a pinnacle thing in our culture. So I'll see you in part two. See you later, anime fans. Peace.